Plant friends, if you have or want a large plant collection, absolutely do not miss this video. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this video for you guys today. I recently had three amazing plant fluencers slash plant parents from all over the country on the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast for an episode on how to manage a large plant collection. So I know that in our community from my recent Bloom and Grow Radio listener survey, if you haven't taken it yet at the end of this episode, I would love Love it if you could click the link in the show notes and take it because I've been getting these listener survey answers back and really starting to see trends within our community and developing content based off of it. So a big thing that is coming up in these listener survey answers is that people hit periods of overwhelm as their collections start growing. I think we've all as plant parents understood this. Our collections start growing and then all of a sudden we're like, ah, I have a hundred plants and what do I do? <laughs> Um, so I decided to ask three plant friends that I've known on Instagram to come on for a chat and they give the most amazing tips for how they've curated their plant collections. So everyone that I talked to for this episode has 75 or more plants. Some like a whole lot of plants. <laughs> and the actual podcast episode is almost an hour and a half. I highly suggest you go and give the whole thing a listen because it's so epic and so chock full of such interesting information from these awesome plant people. People. But these plant parents have these amazingly planty video setups for this interview, so I thought, why not make little chunks of the interview for YouTube so you guys can check them out, see the plants in their space, and also learn these amazing tips. So I'm so excited to welcome Phoebe from Welcome to the Jungle Home, Lucretia from Soul Sister Plants, and Cyril from Cyril Cybernated, he also has a YouTube channel, um, for this amazing conversation. Before we dive in, I would love it if you could be my plant friend, give this video a like and click subscribe because I'm actually going to have several videos of little chunks of this conversation, so make sure you don't miss it. Okay, introducing Phoebe, Cyril, and Lucretia. I want to know, I've asked you guys to share three tips for organizing your, you know, your urban jungles, and um, I'm sure everybody kind of has their own care practices. So um, Phoebe, why don't we start with you? So my biggest tip um, is to set yourself a routine. I always recommend um, setting time out once a week or, you know, depending on the season, obviously. So like in the summer, I give myself like definitely once a week. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the winter, kind of like one and a half to two weeks. So take one day or two hours or a few hours off mm -hmm. um, just to, you know, spend time with your plants, making sure that they're all happy. If they need pruning, do that, check for pests. Um, and also like on top of that, you know, the general like maintenance, like watering, um, wiping down the leaves. I think for me, I do that because it also kind of translates as self care. It just takes, um, brings me to like another, like, world when I'm like tending my plants I really like zone out I'm just doing my own thing I'm not like you know sometimes I'm watching tv but you know sometimes I'm just really into it and it just like sets me really well for the week um another thing is to kind of group plants together so I tend to try and group like my cacti and succulents together because they need a specific part of the window in my apartment and then I, um, I grew more like of the, you know, tropical air, air plants together because they need to be by the humidifier. So in grouping these plants, they can be, they can also have very similar care, right? So like cactus and segments, I don't really go towards the corner because as often because they don't need as much watering compared to like, my tropical plants so my tropical plants will be closer to me mm -hmm. like closer reach whereas my cacti they can be like shoved in a little corner by the window I, if i don't see it it's okay because i know they're still gonna thrive um and also oh and play around with vertical spaces you know like if you have a tall ceiling or even if you don't like just think vertically i think even managing it, even if you have so many plants and it, i know it gets very overwhelming I think think vertical, like just build vertical spaces, build shelves, which is what I have, definitely helps like elevate your space and also kind of, you know, like allow you to play around with like spacing plants instead of looking like a hot mess. Totally. <laughs> Going up the wall. I yeah. mean, you get to a point 
where you got no more floor space and the only thing you can do is start buying plant stands or I have the same three tiered Ikea plant stand in like every corner of my house. I think I have three of them <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Um, I love that. And I think for a lot of people, I've heard from a lot of people in the listener community that that grouping plants with similar needs together is, can be a real game changer, especially if you're someone who wants to take care of ferns, like put all your ferns in the same place so you can check on them every day or every other day, you know? And then like you said, like put your cacti wherever you want (laughs) because you don't have to worry about them as much. Yeah. Um, And then like once you, you know, officially everybody's happy, the plants are happy, you're happy, then treat yourself to another plant. Exactly. And that's, then find that's another my space. Kind of. Totally. <laughs> Most of the time. That's I what that. I tell my friends and people. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Lucretia? So uh, biggest tip is to decide how much time do you really have to devote to taking care of your plants? Yeah. Because people are so good for saying, I want to go and buy a plant. I want to go buy my first plant. I'm going to go and buy a fiddle leaf fig. And I'm like, oh, for the love of God, don't do that. Mm-hmm. That is not a plant for a new plant person and but it never fails people will get excited about the trendy plants that are out right now the monsteras and the 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 fiddly fig and then they don't understand that a fiddly fig is a ficus and that ficus don't like you to mess with them they like to be left the hell alone and then you also want to put it in a spot that it hates Yep. And what I have learned about any of my, so I've had a fiddle leaf. I've had two small fiddle leaf figs. I've had um, um, an altisma, and I've also had a rubber plant, which are all in the ficus family. And when I first got my rubber tree, it was dropping leaves left and right. And I'm like, what is your problem? Until I found where it wanted to be. And it now sits by the south facing window, approximately a foot away from the window. And I leave it the hell alone. And it has been doing perfectly fine for over a year. And uh, so I tend to ask people, so they're like, so what are some plants that I should get? I'm like, how much time do you really want to spend with the plants, taking care of the plants? And once you know how much time you want to spend, then you can go and do your research. That's like tip number Mm -hmm. one and two. Mm -hmm. Do some research on the plant. Google is your friend when it comes to plant shopping, because you can take a picture of the plant. I tell people to use Google Lens to take a picture of the plant, so it'll pull it up and you can learn about it. If you've got pets or young kids, you can learn if it's toxic. So, you know, decide how much time you wanna spend with it. That second tip as a newbie parent, um, or even someone who's seasoned is use Google, Google Lens to tell you what a plant is and learn as much as you can about it. Um, because that will also tell you how much time you really want to spend with it. And finally, if you and the plant don't get along, plant relationships, just like people relationships, they can be seasonal. And sometimes you are just not meant to be together and you need to break up. So I love people who follow me know that me and the maiden hair fern don't get along. I document it. It's life and death over a two week period and the trauma (laughs) that it put me through. Oh. And, um, oh, it was so, it's so dramatically ridiculous, even to the point of it being banished to the backyard to die on its own, <laughs> since it was disrespecting my house and all the <laughs> other plants and everything. So, um, but, but just being able to let go of the plant, if, if your plant has three leaves left on it, sending me or anyone else pictures of the vine and saying, do you think I can save it? No, it's basically dead let it go. And the beauty of that is that you can go and buy a new plant and possibly something that you will get along with better. Hopefully if you've learned anything about it. So I loved what Phoebe said about spending that time with your plants. For me, that's Sunday where I will just spend that time really paying attention. I water them throughout the week because I'm checking or I'll see one of the plants will just get really dramatic and droop and I'm like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, let me water you and come back in a couple of hours. But that devoted time, I can easily spend a couple of hours just looking through, pruning, splitting things up, putting stuff together, plants that I'm propagating, finally putting them into pots. 
Um, I give plants as gifts to people all the time, which is one of the best things in the world. That's a bonus tip for you right there. Mm -hmm. You never have to buy any gifts for anybody because you give your beautiful plants that they can't find anywhere. So um, that's always fun too. Totally. Oh my gosh. And also bonus, if you pot them in a terracotta pot, that's a really affordable, super affordable yes. gift, or you can get a nice pot, but yes. Yeah. I love that. I, my quarantine baby, my quarantine project was putting together my plant parent personality test because I oh, totally nice. agree with you that there is not the right starter plant for everyone. There's right. people have different lifestyles and there's the right starter plant for a, for different lifestyles. And yeah, it's about that matchmaking thing. And so that's why I like made that test because I feel like also you get to know like a lot of different personality types of, um, you know, of, of different plant parents. And some people are consultants and travel or used to before the pandemic travel every week and spend no time at home. And so like, they've really got limited options of, you know, the plants that they can water once a month and, and not die, you know, versus, someone who maybe likes a maiden hair fern. I would be curious if your maiden hair fern, once you threw it in your backyard, might start thriving. You know, those things are like oh, so it did, crazy. No, it outside. did not. It, it completely <laughs> crisped. It crisped up like you would not believe. But I have okay. a friend who um, has a fern forest. She's easily got about 20, 30 ferns and they are thriving unlike anything in the world. And she has been encouraging me to give ferns a try again. So I did get a heart-shaped fern that I didn't realize was a fern until I flipped yeah. over the tag. I was like, oh, damn it. It's a fern. <laughs> and I mentioned it to her. And she was like, so here's what you're going to do. So this fern has been alive for over a month, thriving, because it basically sits in a basin of water. Yep. That, so I said, ah, she said, you got to water them from the bottom. They're not top waterers. That's not, but they love humidity. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing too, is that a lot of people don't realize how that you have these are tropical plants the majority of your plants have come from some tropical location like southeast they are used asia. To, <laughs> yes <laughs> southeast asia africa where it's nice a and lot humid. of the yeah. plants that so you hot. have have come from extremely humid conditions and, that, and so people also mistake that when you say oh you need to increase the humidity they think that means watering the plant no that's misting. I missed. There are times that I will sit over in the spot and I'm like, why am I hot? Because the, I've created an ecosystem that's easily about five degrees warmer in this part of the house than anywhere else mm -hmm. because of what I created for these plants. So yes, it, it, they, humidity is critically important, but a lot of people think that that means watering them and it's not the same. Totally. You've got a little microclimate going on. Also probably with all the transpiration from all those plants all close together. Mm -hmm. You know, Lisa, I yeah. did a fern, I did a fern 101 episode with Lisa from the houseplant guru. She loves ferns. She's she's got so many ferns and she keeps a lot of her ferns close to the kitchen sink. Because smart, as yeah. she's, you know, doing her dishes or whatever, the like steam. she can always yeah. see the ferns. And also I feel like that is also kind of a more moist air, moist, more humid area of the kitchen. I mean of the home. Yeah, you can also put them in the bathrooms too. Yeah, totally. If you have a window, if you've got a window, if you, if I you can't have wait a window, have a window in my bathroom, I can't wait. It's on Me my vision board, literally. Um, that is on my list too. When I get a house, is that I'm like a bathroom with a window, <sighs> so that the wait. plants that need that that strong humidity will just thrive in the bathroom. It's so or funny. a skylight. Oh, oh skylight. Skylight. that's right. <laughs> Don't even get me started oh, on a skylight. Or Zyra. just build your own greenhouse, skylight, bathroom, window situation. Well, actually, I'm unfortunate that, that our rental now has a skylight in the bathroom. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so jealous. That sounds amazing. So what that's are, okay, so well, perfect transition. So Cyril, what are your tips? Well, um, it's mostly connected with knowing your parenting style so this is connected mm -hmm. with your plant personality test and i think i need to take that because definitely it would always tell me that i'm someone who likes to overwater yeah um, so when i found out that oh i like to overwater so that's where it started that you get strategic with how you want to deal with the plant care like oh I, I tend to overwater i like tropical plants which plants do thrive with that kind of parenting style you know um i like succulents i love um, cacti, but since I overwater, 
but also the fact that I live in California, I could like happily um, exile them outside so they could escape my overwatering indoors. So that's one of the few things that I learned about myself in the first few months that I got into plants. So knowing if you if you're someone who likes to overwater or if you're someone who's so busy and only has the weekend to, you know, just give that time to yourself then do your plant care and self care during the weekend. So it's probably, um, it will really definitely help you um, address you know, the overall plant care and your, your I guess, strategy um, in dealing with a large plant collection. And then next would probably be um, also strategically assign your plant corners. So when you asked me earlier um, where I had plants in, so I had plants in this um, spare bedroom where I keep most of my tropical plants because this side was the one facing the beach or the sea. So it, it's colder than the rest of the house. And during winter, it is way colder for sure. But this is where I could keep a humidifier. It's a smaller room, so it does keep the humidity mm -hmm. up during the summer or spring and even better during fall and winter. So I strategically placed all the plants that thrive in that kind of climate here. And of course, as you guys probably have seen, um, all the cacti and succulents are just outside. Um, I let Mother Nature take care of them for me. I just stop myself from watering them. And in the living room, um, getting creative with unconventional spaces. Like I knew I only had that one sliding door, which is east facing, I think. It's not even as, as strong light, but I did have that high ceiling and all those empty kitchen cabinets that I don't really use. So that's where I planted all, well, not really planted, but put all my philodendrons that I put in moss poles and they could happily grow up without me overwatering them. So that's also strategic. People often wonder like how I get up and I always say like, you have to basically climb the counters. But for someone- So you get some exercise too. Yeah, that's and good. for someone who's obsessively watering plants, that's their saving grace that I can't access them all the time. And, you know, there's some skylights on this side. So it's really um, a, a very convenient place for them to be in. And, you know, a good use of space. I can I occupied this space, filled it with something that I love, kept them away from my overwatering. So it's a win-win situation. Take note of the plants that tend to thrive under your care and in your growing conditions. So when I was a, a newbie, of course, almost three years ago, I was so in love with calatheas and prayer plants. Mm. And I initially, I, well, I thought that I, I would do well with them because I tend to overwater, but I'm not a consistent overwatering person. That's the problem. Oh my and God, course, me too. Mm, and that's I, a perfect way to put like, it. Right? Sometimes you would over, well, what, end up watering them twice a week and then the next week they would really you know, enjoy a good drying in between. And that's how I killed most of my prayer plants. Right now, I only have a <laughs> few strong survivors um, inside terrariums or glass potches. And that's the only way I can keep them happy. And I also learned that our water is not that um, soft, I guess. Not as good mm. as New York. <laughs> um, so um, <laughs> ours, I mean, I, my, I water my prayer plants fairly with like distilled or purified water because the tap water is just so oh, bad. Oh, you do? Them. Yeah. So but do you, I only buy, have a few. you buy separate water or you have a filter that you use? Um, I only have a few, so I don't really have to stop a lot. And they're always in a closed environment anyway. So um, this is probably like a sin and people will probably um, call me out for it. But the extra purified water, if I, you know, give some to my cats, the extra ones are, I put them in a container and that's what I use for my pear plants. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're divas, but not treated that way diva yet i guess <laughs> i love it I, I don't see anything wrong with that um well I, when you i know had how plants that were having some issues i did do distilled water to just see if that's what mm -hmm. it was but now i let my water sit overnight yeah or you know so i have a couple of containers like i keep one down here by the plant so if something needs water it's water that's been sitting for days ah! They're so awesome. <laughs> I'm so thankful that they gave me so much of their time and so much information. So I hope you enjoyed all of their tips. Let me know below which one you felt was the most helpful.
If you are interested in cultivating your urban jungles but not really sure what plants to bring home, I suggest you take the Blue and Girl Radio Plant Parent Personality. It's a free quiz that you can click the link in the show notes to take. Um, it takes like three minutes to complete and at the end of it you get your Plant Parent Personality, which is a profile I've made for you, and then a curated list of plants, projects, and free educational resources to help you continue blooming and growing. So if you take the test, let me know what your plant parent result is in the comments or share it on Instagram with me. And if you're interested in the planty journeys of these amazing guests, make sure you go follow them on Instagram. Their handles are below. I also just wanted to take a minute to say this episode was based on how to grow a large plant collection because it's a question that a lot of people in our community have and I want to help support people when they're in these moments. But in no way am I saying, or is anyone in this podcast episode saying, that you have to have a large plant collection to be a plant parent. Listen to me when I say this. You can be a plant parent with one plant. It is about quality, not quantity plant friends. And the key for me in helping myself and this community bloom and grow is this is a journey. There, This is not a curated Instagram account. This is a journey. This is a hobby that we're all doing. We're gonna have ups, we're gonna have downs, we're gonna have plant fails. I personally have had 160 plants. Now I have 60 plants. I've been happy with both of those numbers. So find the amount of plants that brings you joy and not stress and stick with that. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now, but I just wanted to make sure I say that because it is truly my honor to help this whole community, no matter what size collection you have, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>